welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. Well, there are no flood watches, warnings, or advisories out. Not a lot of change from yesterday here. You can see the Kuskokwim River mostly open all the way down to about Antioch. And there are some leads open downstream of Antioch, but uh, not considered broke open yet in that area. Otherwise, uh, the Tanana, again, a good stretch and mostly open here all the way down to the Yukon. So just a matter of time until things start uh, breaking up a little bit there. And, of course, the Sitna River has uh, stretches of sun to mostly open, as does the Copper River. Moving on to the satellites here, far western Pacific, showing this system is what brought the 25-gust, 40-mile-an-hour winds to the western Aleutians with the rain that spread into the uh, central areas today. Down here to the south, the next system that's developing big cloud shield down here, so it kind of hides the circulation, but that'll be developing and intensifying, moving northward. And that promises to bring storm force winds into the central Aleutians, gusts of 70 miles per hour. Tomorrow on the, uh, goes west here. Pretty good storm system wrapped up, but well to the south of Kodiak Island, the front uh, barely even bringing rain into the south coast. Had some gusty winds up to about 30, 35 miles an hour down around Akiak, Sitkanak, and those areas, but only a hundredth of an inch of rain falling in Kodiak in the last 24 hours. And you can see kind of a plume of moisture sliding northward there into a upper level disturbance. It's keeping it unsettled and kind of damp here over the southwest interior with some scattered showers. Got reports of uh, some rain at Dillingham, but only a trace falling at Bethel. So kind of really hit and miss under this. Just a lot of uh, mid and high level clouds with some lower conditions back along the coast, especially this morning. Kipnuk had zero visibilities, but that broke out this afternoon. You can see the uh, area of breakout there. Also over the Perbilof Islands, mostly sunny afternoon there, St. George and St. Paul, down across to the uh, eastern Aleutian, some good clearing. Same thing for the Alaska Peninsula, a fair amount of sunshine, as was seen here over the southern interior, all the way up to the Brooks Range and even the portions of the central and eastern north slope. There was some low clouds and fog, again, hanging along the Arctic coast and down into the northwest areas as well but that was breaking out during the afternoon hours. On the chart, uh, high pressure here along the southeast coast. Still were a couple of isolated showers. Klawak and uh, Ketchikan had some showers this morning, but uh, very light, and those seemed to be all over. Just some variable clouds with partly sunny skies here. Again, up along the North Gulf Coast into Prince William Sound. And then this week low in, over the southwest, over the Cuscoan Valley, brought about four hundredths of an inch of rain to Yakutat in the same 24-hour period with again the scattered showers down to the south and west and then some isolated showers developing uh, due to the heating of the day here over the Wrangell Mountains and the Alaska Range looked like over the White Mountains as well some isolated showers but nothing too terribly heavy and for tonight uh, this system begins to slide up to the northwest a little bit the front doesn't really make much more headway to the uh, to the east, the next one coming up, this will do a slow dissolve and kind of get absorbed into the pressure field of this next one moving northward. But uh, high pressure from the Chukchi Sea southward across the entire Bering Sea here, making for light winds, light variable winds, dry conditions, but areas of low clouds and fog forming, especially all along the coastline. Could go IFR tonight anywhere along the coast or out here in the Bering Sea all the way up uh, through the Chukchi Sea. And again, some light flurries and fog likely here along the portions of the Arctic coast to a lesser extent over the North Slope. 
otherwise uh, mostly fair with uh, just a few clouds around, especially over the mountainous areas, but mostly fair conditions and winds quite light and variable over all of the interior. North Gulf Coast, light variable winds down across the panhandle. This system sliding in mostly to the south, uh, really not affecting anywhere close to the panhandle tonight, uh, but tomorrow, see that moves the edges a little farther to the east. Most of the moisture will go into the Queen Charlotte, uh, maybe a little bit of pickup in the east southeast winds over the extreme southern southeast coast, but for tomorrow, look for a mostly sunny day, most areas there. And again, staying unsettled with this weak low parked over the southwest interior. So Bristol Bay, even Kodiak Island, look for some isolated scattered showers up across the Yukon Cusquam Delta into the Cusquam Valley, the mid valley, lower valley areas here, the Yukon as well, but nothing too terribly heavy. And then some isolated afternoon showers again possible over the Alaska range. Otherwise uh, another mostly sunny day, Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast, uh, South Central Alaska, all the way up into the north there and then uh, more in the way of some low clouds and fog again along the Arctic coast. So no change up in that area. Here's the uh, strong storm that comes northward and brings the storm force winds into the central Aleutians with rain heavy at times and those gusts forecast up to about 70 miles an hour here. Just a uh, perfect location there for both ADAC and ACU to receive the strong winds. Gales out in advance of the front. Uh, coming up to small craft advisories here for the eastern Aleutians, especially toward Nikolsky and gales back a ways to the west with small craft advisories farther out toward Shimia and at two. Otherwise, uh, for Monday, still unsettled here over the southwest. The weak upper disturbance just uh, won't leave the area there. So mostly cloudy skies, a few isolated showers again from the Aleutian Range, Kilbuck Mountains, Western Alaska Range, Cusco Mountains be the, the place to see any of those isolated to widely scattered showers but another sunny day through most of all of the interior away from those areas. Arctic coast, flurries and fog, especially in the morning hours, but uh, North Slope breaking out, Brooks Range breaking out, sunshine all the way down again to the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound and the Panhandle as this uh, moisture now all into Canada, most of it slides by to the south, missing uh, the southeast coast. So look for a partly mostly sunny day with light north to northeast winds or variable over the inside water areas but uh, very, another couple of light wind days coming up for most areas while this front elongates eastward, this low weakens and drops southward a little bit. So looking at some small craft northeasterlies here out over the western Aleutians, but winds diminish dramatically Monday from what they'll be tomorrow over the central Aleutians and then possible small craft advisories here into the uh, Fox Islands in advance of the front in the Alaska Peninsula. A lot of moisture with this, so a good chance of rain slipping up into the Alaska Peninsula and then more of a hit in the shower condition that I mentioned up over Bristol Bay and the Aleutian Range. Temperatures along the southeast coast at 4 o'clock look like this. 49 at Sitka, 48 at Klawak, 49 degrees over at uh, Petersburg, while Wrangell had 50, 49 up at Skagway, 47 over at Yakutat. Cordova, 49 degrees. Uh, Valdez pushed up to 52 this afternoon. 57 in Anchorage with 52 degrees at Kenai. 54 down in Homer. 55 up at Talkeetna with a 51 degree reading over at Golcana. Up uh, north of the mountains there, Tanana, 49 degrees. Fairbanks had 54 with Be uh, Delta, 51 degrees. And Northway at 52. Farther to the north there, Koyukuk Valley, Bettles had 50, Fort Yukon and the upper Yukon Valley had 48, the Brooks Range mostly in the upper 30s through there. And the Arctic coast uh, with low clouds and fog, uh, keeping it on the chilly side, but everywhere above 20 degrees, 20 even there at Barrow, and uh, Dead Horse up to 25, 22 over at Point Lay, and 21 degrees there at Point Hope, just 22 with the low clouds areas of fog there at Kivalina and mostly in the mid-20s here around Kotzebue Sound, but milder into the Selawik Valley with Ambler up to 48 degrees, Galena 52, Huslia 54, McGrath at 53, and Sleet Mute there at 54 degrees, Bethel 46, and temperatures out along the coast mostly in the lower to mid-30s ranging from 30 degrees at St. Michael to 36 there at Macoriak, 25 at Savunga, and farther out to the west, uh, St. Paul 39, 40 degrees. Again, some sunshine there at St. George with 42 at Unalaska. Lower to mid 40s here along the Alaska Peninsula, 52 up at King Salmon, 46 both at Akiak and Kodiak, and near 40 out over the uh, central and western Aleutians. Lows tonight, 
coldest up in the north there, north slope and Arctic coast uh, down into the teens, 20s to lower 30s through the Brooks Range, and then mostly in the 30s here over the central interior. Out to the west, uh, a little more cloudiness, keeping the temperatures from falling too much there. Look, upper 30s to lower 40s there. Otherwise, upper 30s for Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, near 40 out over the Aleutians. And uh, mostly in the upper 20s, mid 20s, mid to upper 20s for the Copper River Basin. Otherwise, south central Alaska, lower to mid 30s, upper 30s here across the southeast coast. Highs for tomorrow down in that area, mostly in the mid 50s uh, from Dixon Entrance northward here to about Yakutat, 53, the forecast high there. And uh, again, 55 to 60 for south central Alaska, 60 degrees, Anchorage, Palmer, Wasilla, very possible. And uh, even a bigger area of 60 degree weather up there in the central Tanana Valley around the greater Fairbanks region. And upper 50s back out to the west there toward Tanana. 20s again, lower to mid 20s up along the Arctic coast and upper 20s through the Bering Strait uh, coast down to the St. Lawrence Island area, otherwise upper 30s for the Pribilofs, lower 40s for the Aleutians. And flying weather, it looks like good VFR here all along the southeast coast tomorrow afternoon. Maybe some marginal VFR catching the extreme south coast as that system slides by to the south, uh, a little bit of moisture there. but. And then the weakening front trailing off back to Kodiak Island, some marginal VFR, areas of marginal VFR over the southwest interior, the Arctic coast, marginal VFR with uh, areas of IFR, especially in the morning hours, all the way around down to the Bering Strait coast, and then some marginal VFR in areas here from the eastern Aleutians up across the Pribilofs, big area IFR out here over the uh, central and west central Aleutians. Anatovic, good VFR through both the Berks Range passes tomorrow. And Lake Clark and Merrill open as well with uh, rainy looking good VFR for windy. Isabel VFR and Mintasta also looks VFR. Tanita will be VFR tomorrow in either approach as will Portage VFR. Chilkoot and White, uh, wide open VFR conditions there. Freezing levels shows uh, 2,000 feet here all the way up to the Brooks Range, 4,000 feet here over south central Alaska, actually up into the Tanana Valley as well, and then 2,000 feet back down across the northern panhandle, and uh, two to 4,000 feet here uh, with that advancing system, those south winds pulling some warmer air up into the south central Bering Sea. Icing threats with that uh, possible occasional moderate with that storm coming up from the south here as it interacts with some of the terrain. ADAC, ATCA, possibly some moderate, uh, widespread moderate occurring there as well as out toward Amchitka Island, all below 12,000 feet. And then some uh, areas of mixed icing here with the unstable conditions we have over the southwest interior. And again, all of this, uh, this next patch of moisture mostly slipping by to the south could catch the southern coast of Prince of Wales Island. And the upper level wind full charge showing the low associated with that way down to the south here. Here's a system sitting over the southwest that's keeping it unsettled there for the next uh, couple of days. High pressure, warm conditions over the eastern interior, another high out over the northern Bering Sea. And then the uh, upper low associated with this strong south to southeast jet that's going to pull that next system right up into the central Aleutians later tonight and into tomorrow. At 9,000 feet, easterly winds up to 70 knots here across the central Aleutians, 40 knots southeasterlies, increasing to 40 knots for the eastern Aleutians tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon. Northeast, 20 to 40 knots, lighter to the west there over the western zones, and light variable winds here from the north Gulf Coast through all of the interior. Could have put another high center here over the upper Yukon Valley uh, with northeast winds south of that, and kind of a west-southwest, barely a breeze though. Really light and variable and a little more easterly here over the panhandle, but light as well. And that same pattern at 3,000 feet, light variable winds here for the north, central interior, all the way down into the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, five knots for the panhandle, the stronger boundary of wind, mostly south of the area there. Only 20 knots though, and then the strong wind associated with the storm coming up from the south, 40 to 60 knots in over the central Aleutians. Again, those winds increasing to 40 knots there for the eastern Aleutians into the afternoon. And uh, up around the Pribilof Islands here, seeing the winds increase tomorrow afternoon as well. Turbulence-wise, look for areas of severe, mostly for Adak and Atka, maybe as far west as Amchitka, with moderate chop approaching uh, the eastern Aleutians, uh, Nikolsky, moderate chop by tomorrow afternoon, and then improving 
conditions back out to the west with less gradient. Otherwise, turbulence free here for everywhere else, Kodiak Island all the way to the Arctic coast, no turbulence at all for the southeast coast. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining us today is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Thank you for joining us, Eric. My and pleasure, Dave. Thank you. And uh, t you're joining us here to talk a little bit more about satellites and how satellites work, and especially one neat feature that's working over Alaska right now. What is that? Mm -hmm. Well, there's uh, a lot of weather satellites and a lot of instruments on mm -hmm. these satellites, and there are new generations going up and new instruments. This includes something called the day-night band, okay. which is not a cover band at the local bar, yeah. but it's a new satellite that is very useful, especially here in Alaska, especially in the winter. In the winter time, yeah, that mm -hmm. makes it a little bit hard to use some of the normal tools that we associate with uh, weather satellite imagery. Right. You know, one of the classic weather satellite instruments is just visible light. What mm -hmm. would the human eye see if you were riding on a weather satellite yourself yeah. and looked down, and it was black and white, you'd see uh, the clouds reflecting the sunlight. And we've got mm -hmm. an example from the Pacific Ocean. There's a geostationary satellite. And we can see that the eastern side of the image is uh, in daylight. The western side, it's night over there, so mm -hmm. you don't see anything because there's no sunlight over there. Right. And visible imagery, it's very intuitive. You see the clouds just like you see them right. um, standing on the ground, but now you're a satellite seeing them from above. But the problem is, what about the night side of okay. the planet? How do you track the storms? How do you know where the rain is, the snow, the, the weather, mm -hmm. if you can't see the clouds? And that's why, just like a television can change from one channel to another, or a radio can change stations, mm -hmm. satellites can change the frequency of the electromagnetic spectrum okay. that they're looking at. Uh -huh. We can go to infrared instead of visible light. You know, it's heat energy. You can see heat, and we've okay. got another satellite picture from the same time, same satellite, mm -hmm. out over the Pacific Ocean. That's the infrared side. Okay. and we're seeing temperature there. And even at night, when there's no light, everything still has a temperature. So we're sensing something with a thermometer instead of uh, perhaps the, the visible side of that, is what you're saying? That's right. Okay. Um, right. On this depiction, colder features are, are lighter shades, mm -hmm. warmer features are dark. And so clouds tend to be colder than the ground. Clouds are higher in the atmosphere, it's cooler. Oh, okay. And so that very same image on the western, or the left-hand side, of the, the globe, now we can see the clouds there, even though it's nighttime, because we're seeing the temperatures. Mm -hmm. And one nice feature is that tropical storm there, um, just in the middle of the, the northern hemisphere there, high, uh, hurricane or typhoon, That's depending that on swirly your, part that we see in the middle of the image? There you go, you okay. can even see the eye on yeah, it there, okay. especially in the infrared image. So, we've got two kinds of imagery there from the same satellite, different instruments, you know, different channels, like on a television, mm -hmm. visible and infrared. You know, it turns out, there's no one magic tool uh, each has its strengths, each has its flaws, mm -hmm. weaknesses. The visible is nice, it's intuitive, it's easier sure. to understand, sure. but doesn't work at night. Okay. Infrared is nice, it, it works at night, mm -hmm. you can see temperatures, but there is a catch. What if your clouds and the nearby bare ground or mm -hmm. open water, what if those were about the same temperature? Oh, that's going to be hard to figure out what's going on. If you can only yeah. see temperature and you have two features mm -hmm. that are the same temperature, they will they will look the same. You, you won't be able to tell. They're camouflaged. This happens, especially, it can happen around Alaska, mm -hmm. especially over the ocean when you have low clouds that are the same temperature as the open water. That happens quite a bit in Alaska. Yeah. We have an example. Now, okay. this is from a different geostationary satellite. It's down over the Atlantic Ocean. Look in the South mm -hmm. Atlantic. In infrared, we've highlighted in a yellow circle there, um, there's uh, some patches of clouds, but it looks like there's a clear area in the middle of that oh, image. Sure. Yep. That's the infrared look. But let's take a look at the, the visible channel, and we can see there's a stripe of clouds across the oh. middle of that circle that is only visible in the visible. Okay, right. The, the trick here is that those are low clouds of about the same temperature as the surrounding ocean. Mm -hmm. So from an infrared point of view, where you're seeing temperature, mm -hmm. the clouds in the water nearby are the same temperature, they look the same. It's only on the visible that you can see what stands out as the actual imagery. Okay. Two tools, each have their strengths and weaknesses. Can we combine them? That's where the day-night band comes in. Oh, okay. It's a super sensitive visible sensor mm -hmm. that can actually see by moonlight. It can even see the aurora. Wow. And in Alaska, oh. at, we have long winter nights. Mm -hmm. um, we can use that day-night band. Here's an example from that storm that, that blew the Kulik drilling platform ashore near Kodiak Island okay. in uh, December 
back in 2012. Mm -hmm. This image is right near when that storm happened, and it's in the middle of the night in December. Now this looks it like visible imagery. Looks like daytime imagery. It's oh. amazing. That sensor can take any little bit of moonlight and just make the most of it. And we I can see that. so much detail. Even in the northern part of the image there, you can see some aurora up there, the northern lights. That's that are, band that goes across the, the Arctic slope? You got slope. it, that's the northern lights. We're seeing black and white image here, yeah. so you don't get the green or the, the purple colors there. That? But that is the aurora. There's another example of the day-night band, and this is from January of uh, 2013. It's about four in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a snapshot from Weather Service software. And we can even see in the middle of the image, there's the, the lights of uh, Fairbanks and North Pole over to Isleson Air Force Base. Uh, Anchorage and Matsu lights, city lights are evident as well. Sure we can see, even though it's four in the morning in January, there is no sunlight to be had, that just enough moonlight is available that this sensor can see that. So we're, we're trying to solve that puzzle, puzzle where visible light is good, but only during the daytime. IR is good at night, but okay. you, you can't see the difference between clouds and ground sometime. Right. The day-night band is an attempt to do the best of both with one tool. And it's brand new for Alaska here, and uh, we're hoping to use it in the forecast process um, and help predict storms, weather patterns, to, to help get good forecasts for people. Okay, another uh, tool in the weather toolkit for uh, meteorologists in Alaska and researchers worldwide. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining us today. And you can learn more about GINA and the day-night band by going to the web address that you see on your screen. For Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. <laughs>
northeast at about 15 there on the north side of uh, Nunavak Island toward Hooper Bay and uh, northeast light there for St. Lawrence Island. Easterly is coming up to 25 knots, small craft advisories, probably possibly even up to 30 knots there around St. George late tomorrow afternoon, the seas building to eight feet. And for Monday, northeast 30 here for the Pribilofs, northeast 25 for the Northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island north at 20 knots with seas in ice-free waters up to about four feet and easterly is at 20 knots here south of Nunavak Island. Up along the Arctic coast, uh, easterly is 10 to 15 knots on the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline, strongest toward demarcation point, but not all that strong. Light and variable winds for the central and west coast and the northerly is at five knots here, Cape Lisburn all the way down to uh, Wales. And then that picks up to about 10 knots, not much of an increase here, but northerly from Wales to Cape Thompson and then the western capes here northeast at 10. Light northerly winds for the western central coast, the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, really light winds east to southeast, five to 10 knots. And looking at tonight again, this system pulling away from Kodiak Island, but still some scattered showers around this low, keeping it unsettled over the southwest, uh, all the way up to Norton Sound actually, but fair light winds through the central and eastern interior, all the way down to the North Gulf Coast. Variable clouds, light winds for the panhandle. This is that storm coming up that will bring the storm force winds. Gusts to 70 miles an hour, rain heavy at times, mostly confined to Adak and Athka. But those winds will be coming up over the eastern Aleutians in the afternoon hours, as well as the Pribilofs. And then that all elongates eastward, brings rain up to the Alaska Peninsula. But all the winds down below gale force with this front as the low weakens and drops to the south. And still some scattered, isolated showers here over the southwest interior with mostly cloudy skies. But another sunny day, south central Alaska, all the way up to the north slope. That's a look at Alaska weather for this evening. Have a good weekend. We'll see you again tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.